Amara, mm -hmm. thank you for making some time to join us today. Absolutely. I'm excited for chatting with you. Um, mm -hmm. So a little bit about why this interview is taking place. Um, so I'm John Harvey, for those of you who don't know me, and I've gone through a spiritual emergence awakening of my own, which has led me to meet this amazing woman over here, um, who has been a friend and a guide to me at times mm -hmm. through that journey. And today we're going to be exploring and opening up the conversation of spiritual awakening, spiritual emergence, uh, however people want to language it or refer to it, and discussing what that's like. So to start it off, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a little bit about your journey into this crazy world of spiritual awakening and <laughs> the disintegration of the old world and coming into this new world um, is how at least I like to language it. Okay. What was that like? What's yeah, before <laughs> or just before? Or just in, before. In a summary and okay. then coming into, and I believe Pi was a gentleman who helped you yeah. come through that. Yeah. Maybe a little bit about that kind okay. of entry. Yeah, so like, like many people who have experienced um, a falling away of a part of the self. It's, it's called that. It could also be called a, a deeper integration or expansion mm. of self. Um, it doesn't always have to be this way. Mm. And, and actually one of my, if I had a personal dream, mm. uh, which I don't really have so much in that way anymore, but if I did, it would be for a place where suffering is no longer needed. Mm. to realize um, what non-suffering what non-suffering is mm -hmm. or in other words um, you know lack of love is not needed in order to know what love is love this yes I love this um, yeah. this would be a dream uh, yeah. uh, world <laughs> got it in in many ways yeah um, so we think uh, but in so in my case, there I was falling into a great pocket of um, uh, suffering, and this was happening around the time of my divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, so, divorce was the one thing, the one thing I wasn't going to experience in this life. This was the one, the biggest attachment I think I had yeah. to my sense of identity was that I would not um, be that kind of woman. I would not be a divorcee or whatever that meant to me at that time yeah. in my life. And um, due to, well, to many things, but due to what was actually being experienced within my own self, I had a husband who reflected back to me um, parts of myself I was not willing to look at. Yeah, uh, in the case. Yes, and therefore <laughs> I had to experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of pain. So, and this ID, this is when you say a falling away of the self, is that mm -hmm. what you're referring to? This part of you that had a belief in something or an idealism or, you know, I'm, it's not going to happen to me. And then you have to go through that mm -hmm. breaks you down to be ready for a spiritual awakening or something. Yes. It's like, uh, it's a concept. A concept. Yes. Concept. A mental construction. A mental construction. Um, that identifies itself. It's actually a habit. I call it the habitual energetic patterns of mind. It's a mouthful. Yes. I like <laughs> that's it. how they were. That's how <laughs> they were shown to me. Yeah. As habitual energetic. energetic patterns of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, I've seen this is in my what mind. we call yeah. ego. Um, okay. The egoic construct. And from what I understand, like the cells are feeding, the body is getting used to this. It's it's a state. In NLP, they call it a state of being that you, you get used to. Mm -hmm. And then from going through that process, you were being maybe purged. I know when we, I interviewed Pai, he talks about the disintegration yeah, stage. Yeah, the disintegration. The so it's the, it's the sense of self that's based on the lie. Got it. Yeah. Summed up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and as the lie was being um, unraveled yeah. and unpackaged and, you know, so that we could get a really good look at it, um, Actually, it was Pi that allowed me to look at it, to look at the lie. Yeah. Uh, I call it the lie in the system. And anything that is short of, uh, we are amazing, super human, 
beings of infinite capacity yeah. and um, you know amazing expansive well-being anything less than that is yeah. a lie and I just want to comment on that yeah I remember having a session with you where I experienced something of that we're getting to experience myself is in a moment in time of the me beyond it all beyond all the value systems of the world the cultural systems the expectations the media uh, conditioning systems the, the fantasies I built up all this noise which my identity had formed around, mm -hmm. then to experience oneself beyond all that mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing. Is that some, along those lines? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so you were talking about what happened before mm -hmm. the awakening, and the, uh, the identity was really in crunch time. So, mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing wrong with identity. I want to say that um, ego is not the bad guy. <laughs> Ego is a evolutionary process and a necessary evolutionary process. The ego does not uh, die. It evolves. It's like a baby. I was a baby. Mm. They, d they didn't kill the baby to mm. make this. Mm -hmm. The baby grew. Mm. I'm not the baby anymore. Okay. I'm the grown-up. I'm this. That knows itself as so much more. Yeah, it's than... like the seed. We couldn't say that the seed died. Yeah. Or we can say that the seed, evol seed evolved and expanded and grew and came to know itself. So um, I was coming to know myself in a, in a bigger way, but there's this, there's this moment where you don't know what that is. It's unknown and it's, it's really terrifying yeah. because all you wanted it to be was that one thing. And now you can't have that. For whatever reasons you have created for yourself, you cannot have that now. Mm. And so this is the big fit, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm throwing. Mm -hmm. I'm called wallowing in my own depression yeah. of divorce. Yeah. And um, but because of the, I'll call it, um, committed spiritual seeking that I had done for so many years mm. before this moment, uh, I knew that there was something else there was something beyond mm. and it wasn't what I had found mm. and it wasn't in the pain it was it was somewhere in here or I wasn't sure out there and and I wasn't done yet mm. you know I wasn't mm. gonna give up but I was at the end mm. of what all my concepts and my beliefs and my ideas could do for me they really had reached their limit of service got it they were you've explored them it, they didn't give you what and now it's like so what you're next? ready to jump up which kind of reminds me of the spiral dynamics a little bit which mm -hmm. is a body of work around the different levels of consciousness or where people are at and mm -hmm. it's similar to what Claire Graves is saying is that you, you explore it to the point which so many listeners I'm sure are experiencing in their own unique way mm -hmm. where it's kind of come to it's not working there's it, yes. it's breaking down the lie is not giving me what I thought it's going to give me yeah. yeah there is that moment where you where, where all they talk about it where a spiritual practitioner is where you don't have to be spiritual you can, yeah you can be yeah. non-spiritual was that word anyway <laughs> and um and you can just when you get to that point where where the eye says i can't take it anymore Got it. i can't do this anymore yeah uh, that's a magical moment <laughs> that's a very ripe opportunity that's a huge doorway you know you don't have to search for the door in hidden secret places uh, it's just that it's just right there. getting to the end of it yeah. and ready for that yeah so I was very fortunate to meet Pi yeah uh, right at that moment funny that yeah <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready uh, the teacher you know and Pi, I have interviewed Pi. For those of you who've seen that interview, mm -hmm. Pi has an amazing journey. He's spent years on just coconut fasting. He's a real, <laughs> you know, Pi better <laughs> me, longer yeah. than me. Yeah. Amazing character. So yeah. Pi was this person you've met that helped take you deeper into this when you were ready. Yeah, he something. helped. He he um, he brought me face to face, not with just a lie, you know, mm. but the entire, uh, a, a big majority of the entire package of the lie, I mean, which then allowed me to see the truth. Mm. We could say that. There's no, I mean, 
uh, as I'm writing in my in my book that I'm writing now, you know, mm. I start out by saying everything um, I'm going to say to you is a lie. Mm. I mean, for me, it sounds like I'm seeing the movie Matrix has come yes. through my mind. You know, it's like you know, Neo's waking up. It's a whole yes. fucking lie. Yes. It's yes. like okay, yes. now welcome to the real world. There's mm. a mission and a work to be done. That's authentic. It's not necessarily easy. That's what's just coming to my mind when I'm yes. hearing you say this lie. It's like that. It's like yeah. that. Yeah. It's yeah. the um, everything you thought to be true, everything you thought to be real, from a. Um, Dualistic perception uh, is not the case. Okay, I, I want to know more about that. Because I know in life coaching, bodies of work, we talk about three universal fears. I'm mm -hmm. not enough, I don't belong, and I'm not loved. Okay. And then through duality, I know when I looked at at least the map in which I experienced my journey, mm -hmm. I was trying to find these kind of love, acceptance, belonging through duality. All the different things that promised it to me in right. some form. Yes. Is it something like that, where the lie is promising you fulfillment in that way, and then you're coming to maybe help? That's kind of how I'm sensing it through my map or my filter. Or is it a bit different? No, no, no. Um, I'm trying to go into your map. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, there are promises that the that dualistic perception, that limited perception, cannot keep. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Does that help? Perfect. <laughs> so you'll get this if you do this, and it's just never going to give you that. Yeah. It's like, you know, come here, I will take care of you. You know, it's okay that you're not lovable. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll handle it. I'll take care of you. And there's a presupposition in that, yeah. that you're somehow limited and not okay and in need of help. Love it. Um, it can also be, you know, screw, Love it. screw Love them. It. Love it. We're going to do it together. Stick yeah. with me. And this is a lie. And this is a lie. And we're sold this. And we fool yeah. you know, a number of different ways. Yeah. And Love it. And people take it on different ways. And then it's okay to follow it because, you know, we're, we're remembering, we're learning. Yeah. And then we come to the, you know, where we see, wait a minute. No. <laughs> Not true. And Pi has just gone, here, cop that. And it's helped you see. That, that larger yeah. kind of um, painting or picture. Or well, overview. Pi, he, he didn't, Pi just created the condition for it to happen. It can happen anywhere all the time. And when I say, you know, it can happen, there are three main ways that people experience it. You know, there's the kind of step by step method. Mm. And there's not one way that's better than the other. It's just really what's, what's right for you, what's this. important this is to you. Fantastic. So step by step, you find yourself kind of through the years sort of sliding into the, into the greater and greater and greater truth. And then one day, wow, yeah. you're, just, you're just there. Yeah. Um, maybe there were a few sparks along the way, yeah. but it was, you know, you designed it that way. Beautiful. So it could all be digested and assimilated and handled and, and then really mature and really ready. Um, then there's, you know, those who kind of have it in yeah. three or four or five or six big whacks, you know. And it's like, <laughs> we call this, uh, and in, in the Tibetan lineage of uh, Dzogchen, we call this those who skip the grades. Okay. And, mm. yeah, you kind of assimilate things very quickly and then boom, you know, on to the next. And maybe there's a falling backwards yeah. and then Definitely. two steps back and then, you know, big step yeah. forward. Yeah. And it kind of goes in these chunks, and that can happen in one lifetime, or yeah. what is perceived as several lifetimes. Or, yeah, perfect. Um, and then there's, it's rare, but it, it is, it is happening more and more. Mm. They used to say it's incredibly rare, and now we see that it's, it's less so because this is the mm. nature of conscious evolution. Mm. Those who just um, pretty much have one big big boom, and I know that's happening statistically around the world a, a lot more. This is part of the reason why we're putting this out there. I know when I, I met you, it was so comforting to hear that you had words and names for the things I had experienced. Yeah. And I'd come across and I'd share with them, I'm like, oh, I'm like, this, 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 this. And you're like, oh yeah, it's this, it's that. And I'm like, you got a map for this stuff? <laughs> like this, that it's been mapped out. And I, I don't know how comforting that is. And 
um, it's great to know. So the stuff's been charted out, and I know we've done that with Pi's, um, you know, interview. Yeah, and I will say I was extremely blessed um, because I had, uh, as you know, what we call the 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 processes of awakening that I happened through the inner dance process that Pi offered up. Mm. And then at the same time as this was happening to me, in this very systemless system, in mm. this very feminine form, this very yin expression of inner self-awakening, mm. um, there were a lot of questions that came up. Mm. And because of that, I was able to, again, um, manifest just the right teacher and during this awakening process i was asking a lot of questions mm. and uh, one of my friends said to me you're speaking tibetan tantra mm. and i said great okay where do i learn this tibetan mm. tantra and they said well you can't learn it you know it's it's very secretive and it takes many years and everything and i said no i this is happening to me now i need i need to know now mm. Um, so that was it. I just, you know, in the realm of karma, I say I kind of gathered up all my, my good karma chips and I would always use them for teachings. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of cashed in, mm -hmm. you know, my piggy bank and mm -hmm. I said, I want a Tibetan Tantra teacher who speaks really good English, mm -hmm. uh, living in my home and teaching me daily, mm -hmm. uh, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, Two months later, I had yeah, I had a Tibetan yeah. Tantra trained uh, German woman. She had mm. studied Tibetan Tantra. Mm. She was uh, because of her awakening. She was deemed a Lama. Mm. Uh, she had just been deemed that about a year prior. Uh, I was her first and and really sort of her only student. Okay. She came into my life and uh, she worked with me for two years and she lived with me. And so she gave me the map while I was okay. on the journey. Got it. And it was... So helpful to have, amazing. I mean, to, just to contrast that, um, having gone through it without a map, having been in psych wards yeah, and, and experiencing the vivid contrast of what I call dropping psychic defense systems and being sensitive and vulnerable and, and having a very different kind of energy around me, um, which I know so many people, um, perhaps listening to this, may be experiencing in variations I like to look at it as there's always a pro and a con to the way something can occur. Um, I know from having gone through that for myself, mm -hmm. there are benefits to that as well. Absolutely. Um, yes. And so, you know, if I was listening to this, it's kind of like knowing that, you know, when, when Amara was telling me this, I was like, oh, you, you know? Yeah, but, <laughs> but, I, but I must have just been a chicken, so. Or, or not. I, it, it, it's you're, like, you're the brave one. <laughs> or not, or not. So it's just to kind of go, Whichever way it's happening for anyone listening um, or watching this, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's and always it, perfect. And, and you will, you will, if you're, mm, we can call it an intention mm. or, or a commitment. If it's just tipped towards, you know, I will not stop. At first it's the I of identity, you know, and then later it becomes what I call the I of the witness. Mm. And then that I unfolds into the I of infinity. So when I speak of myself as I now, I am speaking I of infinity. That's what I relate to. Mm. It, it's, it's still a bit of an identity, an infinite identity. Mm -hmm. We call this the, the unified state or the divine state. Mm. Um, there's one more. There's the ultimate truth beyond that. Beyond that. Yeah, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's too unspeakable? It's, un it's, it's quite unspeakable. Uh. Yeah. There's really not a lot you can say about that. In fact, um, one researcher <laughs> said it, he researched all of Buddha's teachings. Yeah, yeah. And there was one phrase that he even spoke about it. And he described it as the center pole of the tent collapsing. The center pole of the tent collapsing. Okay, I love it. So... It's, look, I, I can, That's about as far as Buddha got, so we'll, we'll just... Expressing that. It's, what we'll I'm just, hearing in that is like, at least some context, if yeah. you can. If we can attempt to.